I think to start off with, people need to understand that a student doesn't understand what a teacher's home life is like, and a teacher may never understand what a student's home life is like. And like Ms. Link mentioned, there are students in this program who have had honors all of their life. They've achieved honor rolls, a 90 average, but they have no sense of balance in their life. And I think people get caught up in the numbers, like, oh, you're acing your classes, you can't possibly be feeling unwell right now. Um, and being in the chat room allows you to build exactly that, that student-teacher relationship. And it's just this really, really great level of trust that is so hard to make in a classroom where you have 30 plus students and one teacher. How can you possibly take the time if you're teaching five classes a day to get to know those students and their struggles? How do you do that? Which is part of what makes the chat room so important and why it should be everywhere, not just one school. This is a wonderful program and it should be more dominant in schools in general. I do think that having a background in the arts is really important. You have to understand and actually truly in your own self teaching profession believe in the arts as a tool. I do have that. Um, it's really a very different teaching position. I think where other teachers are used to having, you know, rules and guidelines and these high standards as they should when they're teaching curriculum. It's, it's a real step back. It's different in here because like, things are not for marks. Um, this is a not for credit course. So that was our number one um, biggest decision, but also the most difficult decision to make. So if this program is not tied to curriculum and to marks, how do kids access this room? Um, when they first came into the program, I remember students, we were doing our first project and they said, so how do you want me to do this painting? And I said, well, however you want to do it. Well, how, how should it be done? I said, however you want to do it. Well, when's it due? It's not due. What, how are you gonna mark? I'm not marking it. I said, you're creating in here for the sake of creating. And it was shocking how many kids had a real, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, a month-ish of working and could not wrap their heads around that concept. They have been trained all these years that everything has to be done this way, like this, for that, do here. And so when we take all that away, and they finally settled into that, the success was great because they really were creating for the sake of creating. So um, as a teacher, you need to get used to that. Staff have very, like, talents. And so when you figure out what talents your staff bring to your school, there are many different ways to help students with mental illness. And um, we were lucky to have Brianne Link, and she had this skill. But that's not the only way to support students. And if you look at your staff and to see what they can provide students, then you build the program around your staff's strengths. Um, because you can't remake something like this, but you can take this as an example and say, hmm, you know, I, ha I can do this part of it or I got this part of it and then, and then it grows. Because this program is a lot different today than it was, you know, two years ago. You know, and it's been building and building and building. And, um, you know, hopefully we can extend it into the, the feeder schools. You know, we're a tri-school site and it would be great to have this support system following students all the way through their, you know, and so there's always different ideas being generated and you just have to, to start and, and let it go. Myself, personally, I've been working and talking with some of the universities. I'm thinking, would it be a great opportunity to sort of work with the universities and some of their student teachers who have this kind of unique edge. One of the professors at the University of Lethbridge, in fact, said, I have had a handful over the last few years of these unique sort of student teachers that are about to go out into the world. They, they have an art BFA B Ed, um, but they do, they want to go kind of that different route, maybe don't want to teach the art curriculum as much as they are passionate about the arts itself. This would be, this would have been a great placement for them. So I think perhaps that's a way to go. Like, can we connect with the universities more to see who they're sending out and graduating? Um, and then the experienced teachers too, some of the more mature teachers who have amazing um, bag of tools and experience, all of that matters. So is there someone like that who has all of those backgrounds and wants a change in, in teaching position as well? I do think that there is an answer for it. It's just going to be unique to each school, who they have available and who they can bring in. It, it could be the same program, but it'll look a little different at each school. Uh, and it's harder and harder to find really great connections with people, just face to face meeting someone, having a really solid group of friends. Uh, because things change so often and then you go home and you don't see them until the next day at school. And in the chat room, there's sort of a sense of consistency. Like the people are always going to be there and they're always going to understand you because they've been through things that are similar, not necessarily the same, but they have a feeling of what it's like to maybe feel afraid or to feel excluded. And they get that. And you find yourself making these connections that without the chat room you wouldn't have ever made. 
right? Like I, I'm friends with ninth grade students that I wouldn't have met if they hadn't been in the chat room. And we get that relationship that just wouldn't have existed outside the room. When they come in and I'm learning, let's say that it is a, a bullying related issue, which ultimately has um, weakened their self-confidence. I want kids leaving this program, they have to be confident. So the other things in school, we do deal with all that, but can you leave this room with a couple uh, tools that you didn't have before? Can you speak up for yourself a little bit more? Are you, do you have that? Um, and it really is confidence. So I think that when they see, hey, I feel like I belong in this room, like I was saying before, where a student who felt like they really had nobody, they're not gonna speak up as much as someone who thinks someone else has their back. And they've tried it, and sometimes they succeed, and sometimes they don't. And when they don't, they come back, and again, we talk about it again. And there's and, and there's so many organic group discussions that happen in here that just don't feel awkward. It's so great. Yeah. <laughs> and I think there's other teachers th to spark, oh my gosh, you talked about that? How'd that start? <laughs> I said, it just did. Someone said something, and then someone gave advice, and someone else gave advice. And next thing you know, we've had an hour conversation about a really serious topic. But I think that they leave saying, I learned something other people feel like me, it's not just me, I'm not just alone, and okay, what can I do? And those people are there to help me and support me tomorrow. I wish every child had this, because at home, we can't always get to the point of things. When your child's upset and they come home from school, sometimes the last thing they want to do is talk to you. And we have our own problems as well, but it's such just a wonderful atmosphere and there's no worries and I, I feel wonderful that my daughter has Brie and all her support and everyone else here that takes the time to care about them as much as we do. Some students um, that we have, their anxiety has been so severe that like no eye contact, their head is down, they don't really know how to speak and so, and on the flip side, academically are very successful, so they are our top students, 90s, but w are you really academically and overall successful in high school or just your marks? So okay, you're going to graduate from here with top marks, but did you, would you look back on your high school experience and say it was great and successful? I don't think so with those kids because you're graduating with these marks but no social skills to go out and become an adult and get a job and have an interview and go to university and work with other people. So this room has got us to know our students better and I think that for those type of kids in particular who truly can't express themselves with words, the arts have been the real tool for them because they will do these paintings and then I'll say, tell me about your painting. And really at the end of that conversation, I say, you realize you just told me about yourself, but they feel like they're talking through their art, not in some nervous interaction with an adult saying, tell me about yourself or what's wrong? You know, like it's not language like that. We don't use that in here. So they understand themselves better through the work that we do. I understand them better through the work that we do. We share all of that with our learning support team. So overall, the kids that participate in here, I like for sure truly feel that we know our students better at Cochrane High and then we can actually help them on a whole other level than we could have before because we know their strengths, we know their challenges, we know personally what they're going through maybe in their home life and when we know all those pieces we understand you better, we can program for you better, we can help you better. This program is absolutely vital like there's no really other way to put it. This, this room has the potential to save lives even. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't want to implement something like this in your learning space because it helps students tremendously with work with home problems, you know, school um, tears down all kinds of barriers. It's, it's a miracle program, truly. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I get emotional thinking about it, but <laughs> Me too. it's just, it's vital, absolutely. And mental health is at the forefront of the news right now. And um, it's, it's a huge issue. And if schools want to have a way to deal with it adequately, this is the best program, this is the best way to do it, to have a safe space for students to go to, to have a counselor to talk to all the time, to have a quiet space, um, a place to create artwork, to work through emotions and feelings. There's no better space to do that than a program like this. Mm -hmm.